Want to help support the channel? Then why not check out the merch that's available from the links below in the description. Help out the channel and get more phenomenal stuff for yourself. And now with that, let's jump straight into the video. Hey Ranger Nation, welcome back to another video. And today I wanted to talk about season two, part one of Dino Fury, which at the moment is currently on Netflix. Go check it out because um, it's a really good series. That's not the video. Please continue to watch, please. <laughs> so this is kind of my breakdown of all the stuff from it, not just like what's happening in the episodes. So I kind of have written it the old school way that I have. So I shall be looking down at that at times. But yeah, let's kind of talk about this. Now, this has dropped on Netflix um, almost everywhere around the world. I know there are some places that don't actually have it just yet, but currently in the UK as well as America, those are the two main places that I have seen this kind of happen. Will it come out later on? Probably in about six months time. Sorry, Ollie. <laughs> Sounds really bad, but it, it'll be out very soon in other, uh, other places. I wanna talk about the production of this. Now, I really do think the production has gone way up. Now, considering how this was written and shot and filmed, what it would be like on Nickelodeon, it has a different air to it, which I've, I've kind of noticed. It's something that is completely different. And even though it has some trace elements, I feel like even though this was written and shot at the time of season one, I do feel like they kind of thought, well, we know we're not gonna be on Nickelodeon anymore. We're gonna kind of move over and do something that way. So to me, I was very happy with this. Some shots were completely different. So when you saw different camera angles and you saw Zeta running across the uh, the roof or even like Voidnet catching the Sporax in different angles or even like at cameras at different places, I generally thought that this was fantastic. One of my favorite scenes is literally Zeta running across and it's not just like a quick run from the around the corner it was more like there was a monster attacking and he's running from far away not just teleporting in and that scene i think is absolutely fantastic and we don't normally get that when it comes to power rangers so seeing it being being in a whole new light was absolutely fantastic to me but this i kind of thought might be a, a, a thing where the camera requirements now i don't know if it's all being filmed normally on the same camera that uh, they had on nickelodeon but i know netflix has a certain uh, camera requirement so you couldn't just make something like on a dslr or anything like that yeah again if they're using just dslrs i'd be very like, kind of uh, but proper cameras like a red camera or something like that where Netflix has certain requirements uh, to go on their thing. So I don't know if they just up the production or if they use the camera all the time or the certain ones they have to kind of follow the Netflix uh, requirements. You could tell that the camera difference was a lot more in there. So it didn't feel like it was just a generic, like, uh, it, like it felt different. And I, I generally am all for that. Now I know that someone mentioned that obviously Nickelodeon wants HD, but obviously uh, Netflix is uh, 4K, which does make a huge massive difference. In this one, I, I didn't really pick up on much Sentai footage. I, I always take out the Megazord fights because I don't feel like that's fair to add in the Sentai footage because obviously they've not filmed their own stuff. But when it's when I was having Ranger fights, they very rarely used that much kind of like uh, Sentai footage. I think there's like one episode that really does use it quite a lot. But majority, I couldn't really tell. And when they did, it mixed in so well compared to all the others that we've had. I generally was just like, do you know what? That's absolutely nice. It's nice to see that they weren't relying on Sentai footage all the time, which then took it to the next level for me. I feel like this wasn't just a kid's show. I felt like this was a show for all audiences. Now, we've had the whole thing when someone turns around and says, hey, this is just a kid's show. You shouldn't be doing this or whatever. I generally didn't think it was. I thought it was more aimed at like teens and uh, like the young adult audience. And that's something that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm quite impressed with. And when I was watching it, I didn't feel bored whatsoever. I don't didn't like go, oh, I need to kind of turn over. And it's a series that I think I could be, watch over and over compared to season one where most of it was, ah, okay, it was pretty cool. Season two just seems completely different, which again, I'm all for. It also made me really excited for the rest of the season. So I now really want to know when it's coming out because I can set my calendar and go, hey, I really want to watch this. It's got me hyped for it. And even when season two, part two drops, I'll probably be, uh, I'll, prob uh, I'll probably rewatch the first part. So I'm caught up because everything in this was great. The, the dialogue, the characters, everything was written really well in my eyes. Moving on to the writing, 
as I just briefly talked about it, I felt like it was all solid. I didn't feel like there was any kind of wishy-washy, maybe one or two lines, but majority of the time I was more like, do you know what, this is solid writing. The writing for me, for like Ollie, I absolutely hate Ollie in this. And I feel like now that he's slightly changing, but it's just his attitude. And I always think that if you hate a character quite a lot, then you find that you, you know, that's good writing. Look at like Game of Thrones with Joffrey or like with Doctor Who and the Doctor. Once you start hating them, you know that the writing of that character is really good. Not just, oh, I hate this so much because whatever. I generally didn't like Ollie's attitude and I'm hoping now in the rest of the season that it's actually gonna be pretty decent in the next 11 episodes. Season one flowed quite well, but not as much as season two. And I generally think that when you can make a season flow and actually be interesting with the writing, it turns things around where you're excited for the next lot. So for me, I generally really wanted more and more from this. And I feel like I would love to have Simon and his writing team carry on for pretty much however long that you know Netflix will allow them to. I know Jonathan Entwistle's there, but I would love Simon to stay on. I'd love the writers to kind of stay on at the same time because I'm actually generally enjoying the season for once compared to what we've had in the past. Season one always had the kind of comedy element and that's because of Nickelodeon. So I felt like sometimes in season one, the comedy overflowed with everything and I didn't like that. That really did kind of get to me. But one thing is with the season two, the comedy seems to be actually quite natural or kind of pulled back to the point where it's not slapstick all the time. And you can definitely see that from when looking at season one to season two, that it's actually more generally enjoyable. Characters where people have said, oh, I don't like Jane or Jayborg whatsoever, now feel I actually like these characters and they're actually quite decent. You know, I've always thought they're quite decent, but it isn't comedy in your face where Jay Borg will turn on a leaf blower and then suddenly Jane and Jay Borg will fly off into like the sunset, pretty much like Team Rocket. There were generally moments with those two characters that I really liked and I would love to see them in more episodes later on or even after the season, depending on what happened. I would still love Buzz Blast to be the main hub for everything for media in Power Rangers because I think it's pretty cool. Now, one thing I generally really liked is Void Knight. Void Knight to me is a really decent character. I feel like his main mission was this. And then when you look at season two, when he's like, I don't want to hurt anyone. I just wanted to get the love of my life back to do this. I was really happy. I was like, that's character development where I didn't really kind of see it where he's like, I'm not attacking humans to, to do this. But his kind of redemption arc, Jeremy kind of liked it. You know, it was that at that moment where he's like, I don't want to hurt anyone. That's never been my intention. I generally really like that because it showed that he was able to change really quickly rather than just be like, oh, I'm going to do what uh, Void Queen says. I'm not going to instantly keep doing that over and over. And I was like, do you know what? Brilliant. Keep this coming. I want to see more redemption. But now, obviously, that he's Void King, it's going to be different. So I want to see how the, the writing works. And if the Rangers are going to say, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that, like try to get through to them. I feel like if they can, that would be great. One of the other things is with the Void Knight and Void Queen scenario is that after all this thing where he's like, oh, the love of my life is here, I will do anything for her. And the fact that she turned on him, yeah, we kind of all saw that coming anyway. So we kind of knew what was happening. But seeing that to the point where he probably doesn't want to go against her, but he doesn't want her to attack humans or to kind of take her revenge on it. Uh, to me, I, I was like, do you know what? Kind of okay with this. But I kind of see that he will probably struggle. Well, not anymore though. But at that time, it was more, should I go against that person that I love? Or what happens? I have to put other people in front of me and her. And that is something that you don't normally see with bad guys. The only thing I, I will say that I, I kind of didn't like writing wise was that everyone turned on him straight away. Like, I, I thought that they wouldn't to the point where they'd be kind of more like, oh, don't don't know what to do type thing, which would just allow him to escape. But now it, it just seems a bit more kind of like they just jumped ship quite quickly. With the whole Void Queen scenario where she's like, I want revenge. And then Void Knight's like, hey, come on. Like, you know, we, we can go to another another place right now. We don't need to be here. And she was like, nope, and just destroyed everything. You could, you could tell he's like, no in that one moment that his heart literally was ripped in two and he knew exactly 
what was happening. So kind of having that writing in there, the kind of betrayal was kind of a little bit more like, oh shit, I didn't, I, I saw it coming, but you were like, is she going to turn on him? Is she going to like bite him and stuff? And it, I think it worked really well. Like if you weren't expecting it, which again, if you weren't, I think that it was a nice kind of adaptation to put in, adaptation, a nice thing to put in basically. Now, the one thing I personally, I, I, I didn't like in this was the fact that when Void Knight is turned into Void King, um, he instantly is like, oh, I'm now going to follow her and do what she says. She is like, you know, my queen type thing. But it's more kind of like, previously you were kind of equal. And it felt like now that Void, like Tarek, I really want to call him Derek. I felt like Tarek now was that sort of character that was more like a minion. I wanted them to be equals because it would make sense. But now it just feels like Void Queen is that higher up, but Void King isn't. And I feel like it's not kind of well balanced where it's more like, oh, do what you say, no matter what. Where I think I kind of would have much preferred seeing like a, was an Archerina and I can't remember the other guy's name. If you know in Zeo, let me know. But the way that like say Archerina and her husband were, that kind of felt natural. You know, the same things like with uh, uh, King Mondo and Queen Machina. They're, those are the sorts of characters that I would have liked to see with this, but I'm not a big fan of this. Now, hopefully, in the next couple of episodes when they drop we will see this and it will be completely different but i don't want it to be like he's just another underling compared to the others i feel like that would really ruin it for me i want them to be equals but we won't know until kind of much later on i think another one is later on in the episodes where zato has an outburst of being angry towards uh, void knight when obviously he finds out after void knight has been helping them for quite a few episodes now i could understand if all of a sudden this was the first time that Void Knight was helping him, saying, hey, like, you know, whatever. And Zeta's like, you know, you've attacked us for months. Like, how dare you? You know, rah, 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 rah. But when everyone's like, oh, he's helping, and you see him help, even at that time, Zeta didn't get angry. And I feel like this one point where he's just like, how dare he? You know, you've done this, and rah, and I'm angry at you. I generally really thought, what the actual fuck it didn't feel like zato in this one that really kind of spoiled the character for me if it had been written to the point where over time where in the season where he's just like void knight you know i hate you rah, and that built up i could imagine this being a really pent up thing but when i kind of watched it i was like this has just come out of nowhere you know it, it's not a, a spontaneous thing it just feels like it was written in where he was angry and i uh, it kind of got me and then again it was kind of like oh well it's, it's been written bad like this like he's absolutely fine it, that, that that to me didn't sit right when it was i i think it would have been more beneficial and more emotional if this had been building up rather than just a quick outburst of zeto like throwing a temper tantrum in all i generally really liked how this was written apart from a few like little things that i would probably have changed I really did like this. I felt like this was a, a solid kind of writing for the season. And this is what I think we need. And I would really love to see how this works much later on going forward and, and stuff like that. Now, let's talk about the characters. I feel like there are some characters that have been added in that obviously we, we can look over and stuff like that. With Void Queen, I really liked her character beforehand. Um, I can't remember her name right now at the moment. But Void Queen, literally the actress who played it, perfect i really like the design of void queen i think she's pretty hot um but i i just like that kind of the look of her mainly because it re reminds me of a queen it would be like the royalty and the way that she matches with void knight it works really well so i agree with what simon said on twitter when he said like you know we looked at this it was i think someone's idea and it fit perfectly i just love the fact that they've done this with void queen because it sounds decent also her character where void knight was like when he shouts at mucus or slifer he's like you bumbling idiots rah 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 but with void queen it's slightly different you know it's more like she knows that they're idiots but rather than point it out it's like oh mucus you silly thing or oh mucus i knew this would happen and if the way that she says so, certain things that to me is perfectly different and it gives it a bit more I, I don't know, something different at least. I generally think this is what the show needs. I'm so happy 
that they've written her really, really well. I know obviously that's part of the writing, but the way that she holds herself, the way that she comes across is definitely what a queen would be. And I just think the character in general is fantastic. She has the ability to be kinder, which I feel works really, really well. Now, one thing I didn't write in this, and I hope they don't put it in, is the fact that she destroys Lord Zed. I would absolutely hate it if they did that, and I hope that they don't. But in general, I really did like the way that the character is. She's very strategic. She knows what she's doing. She has powers. I can't wait for her to go against the Rangers. So it'd be kind of cool if she had a different form that way. But in general, I, I think that Void Queen is a really unique character and it makes it something to stand out. And this is what the series has needed for a while. Now with Void Knight, I really did like the way that his character had a quick redemption arc where it's more like, I don't want to attack people. That's never been my thing. I just wanted Sporex for my machine to get Void Queen out there. I generally kind of really like this because it felt it showed that he was able to change and maybe through all the time, he's never been that bad. It's just he literally he's angry that he wants to get his plan out of the way and he wants to kind of get the love of his life back so that he can go live happily ever after. Seeing that, you know, kind of makes it better. And rather than just being like if he had if he was evil all the way through and then did 180, it wouldn't be more believable. But now you see it. He's, he's had his plan back. He wants to make sure it's it's gone on and he wants to kind of take Void Queen away, which I generally thought was a fantastic idea. But I love the way that his character has kind of moved on. I'm hoping at some point he will regain his memories now that he's Void King. So it's not the same sort of thing all the time. I generally think that would be kind of a, a perfect thing. And I want to see the Rangers do that where they try to get through to him and suddenly he remembers and it causes him to go, ah, I'm going to stop Void Queen. And a fight maybe breaks out between them. But generally Void Knight is a good character. I like him. He's probably one of my favorites in the Power Range franchise. That and the fact that I'd love to see him fight, fight Korag. I think that would be absolutely perfect i really want to see that i don't i don't think we're ever going to see it but it would be kind of cool anyway quickly running on to finishing the characters ion to me was a character that actually annoys me a little bit he's meant to be the, the comic relief like he has some cool abilities he has some cool traits at times and i don't mind him but i think it's just his attitude at times i think that he's the comedy relief ranger and i don't want that to happen for him but you know when you see him at the end of season one he seems okay season two it just feels like either he's lazy, he doesn't know what to do. He's got a good heart, don't get me wrong, he's got a very good heart. But I generally am not a huge fan of this character. I hope that they change him. Who knows if they will. Slifer, I enjoy Slifer. I think he's a really good character. I like the fact now that he's able to fight a little bit more. You know, he's not just the, aha, I'm the, I'm the trickster. He's now actually fighting. He's actually getting in there, which I generally really like for the character because it gives him more depth rather than just the, I'm going to disappear, Rages, and then that's it. Uh, Mucus is fine, same as normal. I think I also, going quickly back with writing, is I like the fact that everyone's now against Void Knight. Jeremy after him, I think that was pretty cool. Wanted to put that in there because I wrote it down extra after I wrote this. Let's talk about the editing. The editing, I thought, in, the, in these episodes were really good. Like, everything matches really, really well. Even, like, when they're using small clippets of rangers fighting a monster and they're switching between sentai and american or american to sentai generally really enjoyed that i think it was absolutely perfect for what it is I feel like the entire whole editing has has gone down to the t one thing that really did get me was seeing how zeta was on his knees when void king was attacking um you know using that ultimate attack it just felt very kind of it's like here is a thing where he's standing up ready to fight he's on his knees and then he's standing up in the next shot it felt a little bit differently. What I probably would have done is zoomed in a little bit and moved it aside so you couldn't see Zato, but you could see the final attack go on. So even if it looked a little bit closer, I much would have preferred to see that or maybe a fight between them. So maybe this could have been a part two where Void, uh, Void King attacks everyone and it goes into part two. That to me would have worked 10 times better than just kind of being taken out of it. Now, the shots in there, really nice, interesting uh, shots in that one. But the editing is just, it just looks really smooth, which is something that you don't normally see from Power Rangers. So you know that they're putting money into it, they're taking their time, and they're actually not just kind of rushing it like what we've seen like with Megaforce, where some scenes didn't kind of work out. But like the editing to me is fantastic. It's really improved more than what, I, what I've normally seen. And it was generally enjoyable, like watching the entire thing all the way through and not kind of being like, oh crap, 
you know, I'm completely out of it, and now I have to take a, a few moments to get back into watching the show. I generally think the editing's really improved, and I'm all for that. I, I this is what I kind of want from a Power Rangers show. Even if people are like, oh, it's for kids, it's it's decent for what it is. So everything else, I really have liked the series. I feel like this is a major step up. It's a, fre a breath of fresh air. Even if the entire series was kind of meant to be like. Um, like original, like it was meant to be for Nickelodeon, it was shot like a Nickelodeon show. When you kind of look at, if you compare both of them, it feels like the Nickelodeon show is more of the kids show, but the Netflix, Netflix one has changed dramatically, which makes things a lot easier and, and just looks really nice. To me, it's a nice actual like show and I would be happy to watch it over and over and it could be become one of my favorite seasons. All the special effects, perfect really liked it like i know obviously it could be the sentai footage but even when it came to american like to use the normal stuff when you saw like some of the effects that they put in to make it look better really liked it pretty much we've got most of the quick morphs it's not just like a you know it's it's morphing time and then we get this whole like long thing at times there were quick morphs and i love that i love seeing that sort of thing because you know we've had it like every single time it's morphing time and they morph into the rangers but when they quick morph when they demorph when they quick morph again loved it this whole thing is is pretty decent i feel like the story moves at a really good pace like it's not slow it's not boring like there's a whole episode like two episodes where it's like we've got all the sporks around so you don't have to spend ages doing this you've literally got the main thing right there which i generally like that speed up of the of, of the story because i don't want to see like void queen come in at like three episodes left and you're like oh, okay cool so i love the fact that they moved it up quite quickly it did everything that you know you, you kind of wanted one other thing is like seeing the comedy like a lot of people hate the comic relief characters i really like jane and jayborg i think they're really good characters and i love how they've had growth as well where if you watch season one it's more kind of like oh wacky comedy but in this one it's wacky comedy but done at the point where it's funny or that it's been toned down which I think is perfect. And even if Simon was like, yeah, we didn't kind of like do that, it's the same. I think that they kind of knew about it and kind of changed it last minute, which I think is spot on. I feel like the fandom will be now at kind of ease because we've had these 11 episodes and everyone's watched it, binge watched it, waiting for a week, whatever. And I kind of think this will keep us busy for a while, but I don't hope, I hope that it's not gonna take ages because I want the next episode. I, I want the next lot, and I you know I could have easily binge watched it in a day, but I kind of want the next lot to come up pretty soon, not just be like, oh, it's like six months later, and then we get the conclusion. I feel like now that you've got the hype going and how people want it, keep it going for now. Release it in a, uh, in a couple of months' time, you know, roughly around that time. I think things would work well. So it, it could be spring, it could be fall, whenever. Just make sure it happens quite quickly rather than what we've got now like you know just, just make it happen please i want to watch it i want to enjoy the rest of the season but obviously they've got to kind of space it out i just don't want it to be too soon my conclusion to this so with season two premiering i feel like this is a, a good start to the, to the franchise i feel like if they continued on doing what they're doing now and if there wasn't a rumored split or anything like that i would be happy with the next season because it feels a lot different that they're going in a different direction than they would do now so i was very kind of happy with this i feel like that would be a really kind of cool thing i like the characters I like some of them i like the kind of redemption arcs that they put in and i feel like now we're getting to the point where the series is doing really well it's not just being the same stuff that we've had previously and i feel like it's been taken a bit more seriously rather than it being kind of a joke series so far but or see a franchise should i say but yeah I think it felt natural it felt decent i wasn't bored i generally really liked everything editing was good i liked the camera angles i liked a lot of stuff in this one so i think that this is probably one of their better seasons that they've done and i can't wait to see that what they've got planned and i can't wait for the jonathan end whistle thing anyway i'm gonna leave it there um i think I've, I've talked more about it what are your thoughts about this do you like the entire like series so far would you agree with my points what would you change what would you add if you could don't ask for Tommy because I kind of want him nowhere near this. I, I kind of like what we've got. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Remember to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe because it helps the channel out. And while you're down there, check out all the stuff in the description. And thank you very much for watching. If I don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you in a couple of days.
チャンネルをサポートしてくれてありがとうございますチャンネル登録・高評価お願いします以下のリンクから商品を入手することができます。